Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. Got the review build of my Team Associate B74D, so I picked this up last week. Uh, spent a few days putting it together, and it's all complete, as you can see in front of us. So I just wanted to talk about how the build actually went, my thoughts, and some tips and tricks of some things that kind of helped me out. So as you can see, all complete, uh, a super high quality kit. This is probably the nicest Team Associate kit I've ever built. Uh, has the highest quality parts, a lot of aluminum, tons of carbon fiber as you can see. I mean, there's just carbon fiber sprinkled all over the place. Uh, it's made in Taiwan now, it's a little bit higher quality manufacturing. To me, it looks very X-Ray XB4 like. Uh, they added the basically the spine down the center of the chassis with the uh, adjustable flex by adding or removing carbon inserts so that's very x-ray like uh, they also now give you uh, information about the diffs on how heavy they should be when they're filled up that also comes from x-ray so a lot of x-ray inspired type uh, features even got the x up front so maybe that's a little nod to x-ray so all joking aside uh, it's a really nice kit it the price kind of reflects that they raise the price by hundred dollars so you kind of pay a little more for these nicer parts but overall uh, definitely a very very high quality kit some other nice features the diffs are once again very easy to get to uh, they changed it slightly so you can basically got to remove uh, two screws here up top one underneath here in this little hole here and then one on each side which is these aluminum uh, braces that hold the diff in place. So that's another nice feature of this kit. It does have adjustable axle heights. I'm not sure if any other four wheel drive buggy on the market has that, but it basically uses the, these aluminum, black aluminum uh, braces on each side. Uh, they hold the diff right there in the middle. And then you've got these inserts, which you can basically adjust the diff height. So as you can see, I'm in the lowest position, but there's different inserts here to raise or lower that diff. Pretty neat feature overall. And they basically did solve the problem of how to get adjustable diff heights, uh, which is pretty cool, pretty neat in this market. So some uh, tips and things I noticed, um, for whatever reason, I flipped the arms front and rear. So I actually put the front arms on the back originally and the back arms on the front. So the gold wing arms go on the back. Um, as you can see here, those are the gold wing arms. I for some reason, I thought they would be on the front and the front has the flat arms. So that's an easy way to identify that. You also wanna make sure you have the two holes for the shock mounts on the front of the arms, front and back. Um, that's how you build it out of the box to have the shocks on the front end. And, and these arms, interestingly enough actually have three holes for shock position so these arms are flippable and it's got two holes in the front and then i think this is like a center hole back in the rear so that's kind of an in-between hole for your shock mounts uh, that's why on the setup sheet it actually shows you three holes even though each arm seems like it only has two or one holes on the actual arm some other nice neat features uh, they actually upgrade all the o-rings even in the diffs to uh, silicone uh, rings. Uh, they used to be those orange nitride ring uh, O-rings that didn't seal quite as well. So a little bit of upgrade in some of the parts like that. Um, also have aluminum pins inside of the diffs. So this whole kit is pretty much uh, designed to be fair, pretty lightweight. I mean, they definitely considered the 13 and a half turn uh, racers out there. The the whole drivetrain is super light. Even the ring gears in here are steel, but they're really lightweight. It's got the aluminum discs. I actually modified mine um, out of the box. So I'm running plastic B64 uh, diff gears inside of the differentials. They are fully compatible, so you can add those. And they basically drop about 10 grams each. So what that means is when you actually fill up your discs, um, instead of the 46 and a half grams of weight you want to measure yours out to, you want to get them down to 36.9 grams. The instruction manual overall was pretty good. Uh, my kit actually included this yellow uh, correction sheet. So there's a bunch of steps where they changed the things a little bit. Um, for example, on the diffs, the original manual tells you the wrong weight. Uh, over here, they, you gotta make sure you put the set screw on uh, the, the flat spot of the gears. Um, a little bit different shock uh, cup uh, eyelets on the bottom there. And then the last one, I think uh, they didn't tell you actually that these are two different screws. So you gotta make sure you use that. But um, oh yeah, and over here, the rear axle height, they actually had it flipped. They actually had it set to three out of the box. So the, the stock kit setup is designed for dirt. Um, if you wanna run carpet, 
you will probably want to change things a little bit um, the axle heights ride heights etc so one of the other things I noticed about the manual is that a lot of the instructions don't actually tell you what the kit setup is is supposed to be for example uh, this little Ackerman bar here, it tells you to install the ball studs, but it doesn't actually tell you where to put it on the rack. So a lot of things like shock mounting positions, these ball studs, etc. You got to refer to the back of the manual, look at the kit setup, and then double check where you're actually supposed to mount stuff. So for example, on that Ackerman bar, you want it closest to the bearing right there. So little things like that. I wish they had uh, added during the steps of the build process. Normally Team Associate does do that, but for whatever reason, they missed that in here. Other neat little things, uh, something that might help you out is when you're installing this little pinion gear, uh, there is actually a slot to get access to that set screw. So normally that set screw might be obscured by this actual mounting bracket, but uh, if you flip it to the side, you can actually see the set screw there and be able to get to your hex driver to tighten that pinion um, down all the way. Um, other than that, the, the build went quite well. I'm very happy overall. This is how I actually wired mine up. Um, there's a little pass through a four year ESC wire underneath the center slipper there. So you can kind of see that wire kind of going underneath that carbon piece down there. So that's how you actually wire it across from the ESC to the receiver. The old B64 actually had a channel cut into the chassis itself, but now they have a two millimeter chassis. So you really couldn't make a groove down there. So they actually just put it pass through over that spine. Um, yeah, other than that, I think uh, the kit is really, really nice. I mean. They put carbon fiber in spots where they didn't even really need to. Like they have a little carbon fiber body mount up here. Um, just little touches like that, you know, we kind of went above and beyond the normal team associate kit. And so, yeah, that's about it. Um, other things to watch out, obviously make sure all your wires are not gonna get caught up in the gears. So that's kind of why I mounted my battery backwards like that with these really long leads. Otherwise, I mean, you could probably route it this way, but it is easy to actually get this really close to the spur and uh, maybe even entangle that. So anyways, I think that's about it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe to my channel as always. Hope you'd enjoy this video and look for more videos soon.